big restless sea in a very small and possibly leaky boat as those first disciples did that night in Galilee when Jesus calmed the storm. But I assure you that what at first may sound to you like foolishness is truly the wisdom of God and the source of our new life in Christ Jesus that Paul writes about here in our first letter to the Corinthians. Just think about those disciples who got into the little boat with Jesus at the end of their long day of ministry to cross that wide lake with the wind picking up under dark and threatening skies. We forget that this was in Mark chapter 4, before anyone knew that Jesus could calm a storm. Wouldn't you have been tempted to say, um, Jesus, might not it be wise to take the land route around the lake tonight? Or how about that we at least hug the edge of the shore, Lord, as we sail around this lake? Straight across to me, now far be it from me to say, but straight across seems just the tiniest bit foolish under these conditions. But Jesus not only leads them out there to the middle of the lake and into the heart of the storm, he goes to sleep in the boat. He sleeps on a cushion. And he stays asleep even as the storm increases to the point that they're taking on water. This is certainly not a sailing strategy that one would expect from an experienced professional sea captain. To those experienced fisher disciples who did know quite well what they were doing on the water, it must have seemed foolish or at least a little bit irresponsible. It made them more than a little unsettled and uncomfortable. Jesus, wake up, wake up. Do you not care that we are perishing here? We could say, as Paul does, that Jesus focuses intentionally on faith and not on human effort. His emphasis on resting and prayer instead of heroic action destroys the wisdom of the wise and thwarts the discernment of the discerning. And yet these experienced fishermen, who were no fools, they followed him. And though we read that they left the crowds behind, in Bible study this week, Bob Lambert noticed something that I had never, ever seen before in this story, and I've preached on it several times before. Several other boats followed them. I never saw that before. It made me wonder, who were those people? Who were those followers who risked their fool necks that dark and stormy night on the lake? I think they were followers a lot like us, not the sainted original 12 disciples who had the pleasure of knowing Jesus personally in the flesh, but those who were just beginning to believe, who were just taking their first leap of real faith to follow. Those sailors must have looked pretty foolish and reckless to the wise crowds who stayed safely behind on shore. But now we can say that the fools were the wise ones, the ones who made the decision to follow Jesus. They put their complete trust and their very lives into his care, and they were not sorry that they did. Theirs was not mere toe-in-the-water faith, but get soaking wet and hold on for your very lives kind of faith. 
And this is the faith tradition that we follow. Don't we, pilgrims? I love this prayer attributed to Sir Francis Drake from 1577. Disturb us, O Lord, when we are too pleased with ourselves, when our dreams have come true because we dreamed too little. We arrived safely because we sailed too close to shore. Disturb us, O Lord, to dare more boldly, to venture on wilder seas where storms will show your mastery, where losing sight of land, we shall find the stars. We ask you to push back the horizons of our hopes and to push us into the future in strength, courage, hope, and love. We Congregationalists, you know, have never hugged the shore or played it safe. We are the few, the proud, the pilgrims. Our ancestors in faith were refugees running for their very lives. And yet somehow God gave them the courage to get on a tiny ship and cross the stormy Atlantic for this shore where they founded a new nation that would be a beacon of freedom to the world. You know, it was a congregational church that hosted not just ladies' teas, but the Boston Tea Party. Again and again, we have accepted the challenge from Jesus to choose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise, as Paul says. Jesus scholar Marcus Borg identifies this as our Christian call to overturn what the world usually accepts as conventional wisdom. This